The Bible Treasury. A monthly magazine of papers on scriptural subjects. Article 3, Volume 12, 1878, and 1879. Thoughts on Isaiah 7-9. 1878, 3. I take this passage because it contains a great outline, and is an instance of what is common in the prophets. The taking what was passing then and connecting it with the great counsel and plan of God which has its full result in Christ. In Isaiah, you generally get the whole scheme or plan of God, who is thus revealing as Peter says, no prophecy of the scripture, etc. You do find a present application to encourage faith while the prophet looks out to the full result. But this is to the earth. The events were to happen there. We belong to heaven. There are two great principles of judgment. One is departure from original standing, the other is fitness to meet the Lord when he comes. See the vine for the one, Isaiah 5, the other we see in Isaiah 6, the Lord high and lifted up, and I am undone, etc. Another point is in Isaiah 7. There had been a special dealing of God in giving the house of David. All was gone as to responsibility when the ark was taken. Then he sovereignly raises up a prophet, Samuel, after that David, figure of Christ. I just add here, God has put everything first on responsibility in man and man fails. Then afterwards God sets up in Christ all that has failed in man's hands, as the promises, the law, the house of David, and Nebuchadnezzar, or the Gentile Empire. Then comes the church. Taken as to responsibility, the two is gone. Hereafter you get all these things definitely fulfilled in the second man. It was not merely that Israel failed under the law, but the house of David had wearied God. He goes to the house of David with sheer Jashub, the remnant shall return. The last resource of Israel having failed they must go to captivity. But God himself shall give you a sign, Emmanuel the Christ. Having got this footing, this rock, he can talk now of all the future history of Israel. He sees the whole power of hostile evil coming in, it will all flow up to the neck, referring to the last days. Then also, but he goes on from this time through the whole history of Israel, to what is yet to take place in days to come. What of these conspiracies and intrigues? It shall not stand, for God is with us. This is just the wisdom of the Christian, I may say, whatever plot, intrigues, etc., may be going on. Never mind it. God is with us. These great principles run through all dispensations. You cannot deal with the Christian except for his good. He unfolds the history. Do not you be plotting and planning to counterplot their enemies. Sanctify the Lord God, that is, give him his own right place in your hearts. Taking the Lord God of hosts for a sanctuary brings in Christ. There is judgment on the nation, but the remnant is brought out. Bind the law etc. The law and the testimony are sealed up among the disciples. The spirit of faith looked unto the Lord. We see a remnant separated by the revelation of Christ and judgment comes in. Israel have to wait for them. Christ and the remnant meanwhile take a separate place, and all is stopped as regards the nation. Christianity and the church come in between. The time will come when all Israel shall be saved, but I cannot take this up now. But in the last days, the law and the testimony have to be looked to. The dimness is greater than when Christ is here. In the last dreadful darkness for Israel, they could not put out this fact that Emmanuel has come in and will take up Israel's cause. First, Christ is revealed. Secondly, the remnant are his disciples separate to and with him while Israel rejects them. Thirdly, we come to the last days. As Israel was to be rejected, the remnant could not be turned into Israel and therefore in Acts they are added together and make the church. The Holy Ghost comes out while the great high priest is still within. Our place is thus in heaven. But there is another thing. We are still pilgrims on earth and to this, the Sermon on the Mount even still in some sort applies. The question was raised who is going to get into the kingdom, and the answer is, accept your righteousness, etc. That is the character which suits the kingdom, not the Pharisees with their legal righteousness we are in the kingdom, translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. The kingdom will be set up in power, but now we are in it in this mysterious way. You must wear such or such a coat to be admitted to court, well, but it suits me when I am at court. 
we are born again and so see and enter the kingdom. The way we are brought in is not described in the Sermon on the Mount, any more than redemption or anything of being dead and risen. Still the character of those who could enter suits us now that we are in it.